Oke. Okay. So guys, <coughs> welcome again and yeah, I really hope you guys have enjoyed the other classes so far and that you have been working on your tasks. So today we will be <coughs> we'll be talking about arrays. Yes, day five. Last time we talked about conditionals and I hope you guys really understand it now because here to for your tasks you'll be adding everything together. Basically the the tasks they are like combination of the previous classes like up to the end you go to task uh, day seven now we do the task everything you've done day six and below you need it so yeah that's how it is <coughs> so we have arrays we'll be talking about how to create an array some array methods and the exercises so arrays we've talked about variables but in contrast to variables an array can store multiple values, multiple values and different types of values actually. Each value in an array has an index. We've talked about indexes in last class and the fact that they start from zero. And each index has a reference in a memory address. Each value can be assessed by using their indexes. The index of any array starts from zero and the index of the last element is less, is less by one from the length of the array. That is, if the length of an array is seven, the last index is going to be six because you start the you start counting the index from zero. An array is a collection of different data types which are stored, which are ordered and changeable. That is, you can modify the data inside. Even if you declare the array with a const, that is, it is constant, you can still modify the values inside the array. You can still modify the array. An array allows storing duplicate items and different data types. An array can be empty or it may have different data type values. So if you declare um, an array as empty, even when you check if it's an array or not, it will still show that it is an array. So, and then as it is empty, there are so many importance of an empty array, actually. Actually, yeah, you can push things into it. You can even use that empty array to actually use it to iterate another type of array, which so yeah, an empty array too has its uses. How to create an empty array in JavaScript? We can create an array in different ways. Let us see different ways to create an array. It is very common to use const instead of let to declare an array variable. If you are using const, it means you do not use that variable name again. So <clears throat> the reason why they use const to declare an array is because you can change the things inside the array anyways. So for example, now the reason why we use let, if we say let x be equal to two, later on, we might say x is equal to five and that would be okay. But for an array, even if you say let arr be equal to an array of some numbers, you don't have to like assign say okay this is equal to this you can just change you can modify the elements the values inside this box and as you modify the values inside this box automatically this will change so there's really no need for using let to declare an array except if you want to use the name later on if you want to use this name later on maybe you want to declare uh, another array with that name inside another scope or you want to declare you want to assign something else to that name so that's when you should you should use let <clears throat> so using array constructor well you can const array you can declare a variable and then store it like this array this is one of the ways although i rarely use this anyways <clears throat> this is one of the ways to create an array come in Oh my God. Ah, I'm coming on. 
Oh yeah, this is where we do the class. So I'll clean this again, start from the beginning. So today we'll be talking about arrays. So const or let anyone const let's say R to so like them equal to Array objects. Uh, what am I doing? So, so yeah, <coughs> this is a way of creating an array. If we console dot log is now to actually check what is inside, I have Coca, so I don't need to be doing console dot log there. But console dot wait, I can just do this anyways. I see this is it it shows an empty array so this is one way of creating an empty array one of the ways of creating an empty array so we move from there <coughs> how to create an array with values if you want to create an array with values array with initial values we use length property to find the length of an array so this is an example for example if you want to create an array with fruits so you guys are going to be giving me names of fruits can say um apple okay so you use this box uh or box box brackets or whatever okay. they call it to create some to square create an array, square brackets thank you so once you do that in fact just like this that's another way of creating an array if i do this now a fruit array can you see so and this is the way I use most of the time. I don't do this. I do this. So now that we have the array inside it, we can put things inside. Any data type actually. But for now, we are just going with fruits. Someone said apples. Mm -hmm. That should be giving me banana. Strawberry. Banana. Ah, banana. This for banana. This, this is it. Yes. Okay. What else? Strawberry. How do you spell strawberry? I think it's B. Okay, yes. Give me two more. Orange. Mango. Orange and mango. So now we have an array. So if we check it now, I see it gives us this. It has saved it now. It has saved all of this data inside this variable. So, and that was already repeated in the other examples too. Yes, this is it. If you console.log it to check it here, to show you the data that is stored inside. Array of fruits, array of vegetables, and then, no, this was not what we're doing. This was what we're doing. Yes, so, I'm coming. Where were we? Okay, yeah, so array of numbers, array of fruits, array of strings, uh, array of animal products. You can use that, you can literally use it to create anything. So yeah, print the array and its length. You just use this. This is just like saying console.log and then you want it to show numbers and then comma, we did this in the first class. And then you want it to print the data stored in the variable let me let me show you what i mean for example i'll say console.log what was it fruits spring anyways fruits how to show this and then after it i want it to show me my fruit array then i have this you see fruits apple this 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 is what it should, this is what it's going to show your console exactly this so yeah, we have that. We move. <laughs> so now to we'll print the array, yes. If you want to get the length of an array, you use the dot length to get the length of an array. Dot length. If I want to get the length of this array, what's the name of the array? Fruit array dot length. And I will get five. That is, there are five elements in this array. One, two, three 
four, five. And then the last index, who can tell me the last index? What's the index of mango in this array? Four. Four, okay, you guys are with me, so let's, let us speed up. Um, okay, I have a question. Uh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Yeah. Wait, wait. Okay. I will tell you when to ask a question, but not yet. Because you erased what I wanted to ask, so you erased it. Ah, okay. Okay, don't worry. I'm coming. I'm going to mute you now because this class has been recorded and yeah. So I think it was here. Oh yeah. Yeah. Dot length to. Okay, my mic is on. Dot length to get the length of an array. So if what is this? Yeah, it's still the same thing here getting the length and then here they are saying that array can have items of different data types that is what are data types an array can contain a string it can contain a number it can contain a boolean it can contain an object and then it can contain an object that has an array inside of it so you can use them to store any type of data type any type it does not discriminate it takes everything in so yeah okay so Okay, now, um, can you ask a question? The other time you displayed, uh, when you were trying to explain the array for fridge, and you were trying to recall, like try to console, console.log the fridge. Mm -hmm. So you showed something like fruit, um, semicolon, then comma before the array name. Yes. So there I was kind of conf confused about the okay. name fruit you used the other time. The name which I used the other time, as in. Yeah, use fruits. Yeah. So what I want to ask is, was the fruit there? The name fruit there was the. Because it's not um, what I'm trying to ask. You, it's not a variable. Yes, it's not a variable. Now let me show you something. If so, if you want to console.log a string, it's easy. You just say console.log, even though the string is not stored in the javascript uh, in your javascript even though it's not stored if i want to console.log let's say my name now dummy and i go and check my console it's going to show me dummy this is it wait i hope i'm coming uh, okay uh, it is not live so Okay. If you go to the where is it, where is it? yes, you see dummy. Look at it. Because I logged it on the console. When I also type fruits, then it showed me this is it. This is why I typed fruits. Right here. That was why I typed fruits. Can you see? So anything I type anything I type using console.log will show up on the console. So now, if I want to show this on the console, this string fruits on the console, and then by the side, I want to show the fruit array. Fruit array. So what the console is going to show me is this string that I told it to show first, and then the data stored inside the fruit array. And then you get this. Fruits. And then this is the array. Ba apple, banana, blah, 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 blah. This is what it's going to show me. And then you want to see them well, yeah, with their index, with their length. And these are the things you can use with the array. And if you forget any one of them, you can just console.log an, an empty array, and then you find all of them here. So, yeah, that's that's an arc, maybe. So, do you, did I answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay, so we can move on. So, creating an array using splits. Yes. As we have seen in the earlier section, because we did that in two classes ago, I think, we can split a string at different positions and we can change them into an array. Let us see examples below. There isn't JavaScript, okay? We are going to use code as then. So let's see, uh, let's, let's word be equal to code as then. I think this is start with capital letter. Yeah, code as then. <coughs> this is word. 
if I want to split this coders then, yeah, we did this last cast. If I want to split this coders then into an array where each element is going to be each letter, who can tell me I'm going to do it? Word dot split, obviously. But what is going to be inside these brackets? I want to split this coders then. I want to split it so that each element of the array like this is going to be each letter c o d r and so on and so forth 10 seconds 10 9 8 7 uh, we use um comma comma are you sure is that your final answer yes final answer comma is not going to work why because there is no comma inside this place so it is just going to bring out the whole thing and put it in an array. For example, if there was a comma somewhere, maybe after S, if I put the comma, it will split it into coders and then where it finds the comma, that's when it will split it. And then the next thing after that is going to be another element. If there was, if I put a space inside, it's not going to give me anything. Why? Because it does not find any space here. If I put a space, maybe code and then as then, then it's going to split it from where it finds a space. But this time around, I want to make each letter. So if I want to make each letter or each each of the things inside this string, I want to split it into an array. What I'm going to do is I'll just put this uh, quotation mark without any space, without any elements, and it's going to split it for me. This is it. Coders then. Even if I have a sentence, let's say coders then is awesome. Yes, it's going to split it, and even this space, the space that is here, it is going to count it as an element, you see. Coders then, can you see? The space now is like one of the elements in the array, because this was how, this was how I split it, just a quotation mark, like there is nothing inside the quotation mark. That means whether it finds something or it does not find anything, you just split it as it's finding one element from the other. So that's how split works. And now, if I save this into a, uh, in a variable, let's say, let's, um, uh, word equal to this. By the time I check our splitted word, that means this has now been saved. This has now been, uh, this has now been saved. This thing that I've split, I have now saved it in another variable. So you have saved it to an array. Now I can assess each and every one of those elements using this. I can say split word. Uh, if I check the third element, it's going to give me E. That is 0, 1, 2, 3. That's where E is located. And to give me that. So that's how it works. And then we move. Yes. Creating an array using split. That's what we just did. Can you see? There's nothing inside. And then brought out JavaScript. If you want to use a uh -huh, the reason why they use comma here is because they want to put make each element after the comma, they want to put it into an array. So you are going to get Facebook, Google, Microsoft, Apple, like each of them is going to be in an array. That's why they use comma here. And then they use space here because they want to put each word that is wherever it finds space, it will split. So I, it will split it. Love is take love together till they find space again. Yes, then teaching till they find space and so on and so forth. So that's how split works. And then assessing array items using index. We've talked about that. The first element takes the index of zero, and from there you continue your count. For example, this the length is going to be four, but the index starts from zero, so the last element will be three. That's how it works. Yep, that's what this is what I just did just now. Let fruit be equal to this. So now what they've done is that they have saved banana inside a variable called first fruit. So anytime you want to use first fruit, whether anytime you console.log first fruit is going to show that oh the value assigned to me is banana. Yes, and then the last index is literally the length minus one because i told you that if the length of an array is let's say seven because you start counting the index from zero the last element there is going to be six that is the length of that array 
minus one, which was what they did there to automatically find the length of the array. This is how you can find the last last elements of any array. This is it. Fruits last index, and then you get the last element in the array. Lemon. Okay. So this is something else. This is it. Console.log. This is like web text, different types, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, Redux, Node, MongoDB. So that is it. This is the array that they have here. To check the length, the name of the array or the variable assigned to the array, dot length. Although you can actually do this in case you were wondering. For example, uh, this now. I can just bring this out. Control C. The data itself, but it's just that it's better to assign the data to a variable dot length. Now read really the properties dot length. I'm coming, I'm coming. Can I just spell it wrongly? I'm coming. Let me see. Um, let me see. I will get four. So you can just put it naked there like that without assigning it to anything and get the length. And then there's something I want to tell you. Strings, um, automatically, it's kind of see strings, like especially if the word inside the string as almost already as an array. Of course, you, could, you might not be able to use all the array methods for it, but it kind of sees it as an array too. So that's something you should put at the back of your mind. That strings automatically, it's already kind of sees it as an array. So you can use some array methods for it. Is it all? No, I don't think it's all array methods, but you can use some array methods on strings themselves. So yes, that one is good to know. That was why I tried the example. So yes, that was what they did. No, I did something else. Yes, they check the first element using zero. They check the sixth element. And what do you what do you guys think would happen if you check an element like for example, let's say fruit array. And then I check, I want to check what is at the sixteenth, fifteenth index. What do you think? What what do you think it will show? I want to see what is located at index number fifteen, the character that is there or the element that is there. What do you think it will show? That should be null. Null? Yeah, interesting. Interesting idea since null is empty, right? But no, it's to show undefined. That is, there is nothing there. There is nothing defined there. That place, particular place, is not defined. That's what it's going to show. So yeah, that's just for people that were curious of what it was going to show. So yeah, this is basically a repetition of everything we've been talking about. Number of animal products. Here is one number of numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six. There are six. These are that, that, and this. It's just a repetition of everything we've been doing. I can have different forms of data type. Yes, we've done that. I'm coming. So now let's move to the real things. What's going on? Let's move to the real things. Yes, modifying an array element. Like I said, even if you use const, you can still modify the elements inside the array. For example, if I change this to const, const. Even though normally, unlike uh, let's say numbers const let's say x is equal to 5 if i come here later and say x is equal to 10 nope it'll be like no assignment to constant variable no since i say x is constant x is constant it, it has to retain one particular number and i've said it is 5 that means the constant value for x is 5 and on no occasion is that going to change so it will not take it but because it's an array which is similar to objects actually. What the what is saved is the array itself that is saved inside. 
But what the things inside the array, you can actually modify them. You can change the things inside the array. Because what this has become now is like a reference. Similar to objects, we'll get to objects too, but I just want to have it in mind now. Similar to objects, what the variables, what the variable, what it saves is the reference point. That is what it saves. That's what's saved in the variable. But the elements inside, you can actually modify them. For example, now if I want to change the let's say, oh, I know most I know many people that actually don't like strawberry. So let's say I want to change uh what's the index of strawberry? Zero one zero one two. Two. Let's say I want to change it to what's the popular fruit that people like? Mm. Oh, watermelon. What? Uh, here? It's not the word. Watermelon. Fruit array. Can you see? Now it has changed it. Even though I declared it with constant, it has changed it now. So this index has changed from strawberry to watermelon. Why? Because I modified it here. And it is from the point that you modify it that it changes. For example, if I want to console.log fruit array before I modify it, you'll find that it has not changed. It is after I modify it that it changes. So that's how that's what happens when you modify an array. So you should be careful, very careful when you, when you modify an array. Because one thing you should know is that that original one that you add is gone. So I would advise you when you want to modify an array, except that is actually what you want. When you want to modify an array, you should save it in a new variable. Yes. So yeah, that's this array is mutable, modifiable. This is what we just did. They just repeated it. Year two is the same thing. They just repeated it. You can change it. So now there are methods. There are things we call array methods or methods to manipulate an array. There are different methods to manipulate an array. There are, these are some of the available methods to deal with arrays. We have length, we have concat, which if you remember, is to join two things together. We have index of, yes, to find the index of an element. We have slice, we have splice, we have join, we have to string, if you want to turn the array into a string, we have includes if you want to check if something is included in an array in an array this one returns boolean that is true or false like does this is this included in the array and then to answer you true is this included in the array if it does not find it it will answer false last index of so luckily for us we can also find the last index of an array automatically without doing this countries dot length minus one this array is what you use to check if an array is actually if something is actually an array. For example, let's say you fetch something from the API, you change it into something, and then you want to be sure that what you have changed it into that now it is an array. The name or of the variable where you stored the array. When you type dots, thank God, can you see? It even brings everything out here. So wait, is this how to use this array? Let me see. Is array. You know that means it's like this. I'm coming. Is array uh, dot what's in our check is array. Let me see. Fruit array. It's not defined. Undefined. Fruit array is not a function. Mm. Well, we'll be seeing it along the way. Let me check for it. Is array is array is array getting the array how to check using this array where is it where is it okay when I find it we'll find it on our way actually and when we find it we'll be able to use it how come I forgot how to use this array fruit array is uh, Array. This array is not defined. Mm. This is what happens when you don't use a method regularly. Well, well, well. We'll be seeing it along the way.
but this is what's used to check if something is an array it also returns true or false fill is what you use when you want to create an array when you are creating an array and you are filling it with a particular element so once you do that uh it is going to it is going to fill it with what you put inside the fill for example this is an example here array here you can put the number of elements you want included in the array it and then the, what you want to fill inside it but this one is very monotonous you want to fill it with a particular value for example the field with x here here the field with the number that is zero push this is used to push things inside the array pop is used to pop the last element of the array shift is used to uh, change shift and on shift basically they are used to change the first element of an array the first index so how to create an array we've talked about this this is one of the ways of creating an array and then here if you want to create an array with eight empty spaces this is it you put eight inside this bracket i used to create it you put eight or if it's five empty spaces you want to create you put five there and it's going to create an array with five empty spaces for you so if you want to fill those empty spaces you use the method fill dot fill and then what you want to fill it with you put it in the bracket in the methods bracket yeah whether it is a number a string whatever you want to fill it with you put it inside so yes we have concatenating array using concat if you want to join two arrays together for example if i want to join fruits and and let's say vegetables okay let me do it here const veggies to tomato what are the vegetables we have oh. wait they said tomato is a fruit now okay what are the vegetables we have cabbage uh we have I think onions too i think we uh, have carrots carrots thank you what else do we have You guys don't eat vegetables. Tomato is part of it. He said tomato is a fruit, though. Bitter leaf. Pumpkin leaf, bitter leaf, water leaf. Is it leaf or leaf? Okay, I think it's leaf. Okay, yeah. So yeah, if I want to join fruits and vegetables together, I will just say, uh, um, 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 let's see, fruits array. But concat. But I want to join it with veggies. Let's see what we have here. So it's going to bring the fruit array first, and then after it's going to add the veggies to it. So it's literally going to join them together. So now if I save this into let's say let's let's say food array array, that's a good name, be equal to this. Now uh it will save all the values now inside my food array. Yep, so my food array will contain uh vegetables and fruits together. Hello, um Dami. Mm -hmm. Can so, we can't we use a uh, um what is it called? Arithmetic computers like plus to concatenate two arrays. Plus to concatenate two arrays. <laughs> when there's concat method, yeah. Okay, let's try it. <laughs> uh fruits array plus uh veggies let's see apple banana watermelon this oh but it's not showing as an array let me check it well console.log not showing it as an array it's turned them into a string this is it it turned it to a string, so it's normal an array. Must use the arithmetic, whatever. Can you see? This is now a string. Okay, okay. Operator is used to concatenate strings normally. Yeah. So from there, we'll move. Getting to know the array length, we've already done this. Dot length to know the get the index of an element. Okay, let me see. If you want to get the index of an element, let's say in our new in our new array now, our, our new food array that has everything, 
we want to know the index of, uh, of carrots in it. So it should just be food array index of carrots. And then to bring it out for us, index of carrots is seven. So yeah, I well, we are going to believe it because <laughs> it's a computer that knows much. Let's check though. Index of carrots. No, this food food array, food array. We have to food array. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so it is correct. The index of carrots is seven. So that's how you check the index. Aha. Uh -huh. Now who is going to tell me what will happen if let's say use capital letter C, which is not present. This capital letter C carrot is not present here. So what do you think this is going to give me? Maybe minus one. Yes, it's 25. going to give minus one. It's going to give minus one. Index of gives minus one, unlike this one that we did when we used to you use it to check um, something like an index. Like we use this to check something that is not even there at all. 16. Splitted word. Okay, it exists. Let me use 100. Uh, undefined. It's going to show undefined. However, this one is going to show you minus 1. So actually, even I want to set a condition. That if something exists, do this. If something does not exist, do this. You have to set the condition in reference to minus one. That is, if this shows minus one, do this. So I'll print out uh, elements not found. So that's a very that's something that you need to know. When it does not find the index of a part, when a particular element is not present, it does not find the index. It's going to bring out minus one. So yeah, that's good to know. Yep, this is it right here, minus one. Check an element if it exists in an array. Yes, oh, this is it now. A condition. If it is not equal to minus one, print out this fruit does exist in the array. Else, that is, if it is actually minus one, this food does not exist in the array. So that's how it works. You can use tenary operators. We've worked on tenary operators also. So at least I expect you guys will know that. So as you can see, everything is a combination of everything we've been doing so far. So, yeah, and so on and so forth. Getting last index of an element in an array. If you want to get last index of an element in an array, instead of doing this length uh, array dot length minus one, there's a method that they have given you and the name of the method is last index of so last index of what it does is that it gives the position of the last item in an array if it exists it returns it returns the index else it returns minus one okay yeah so now it actually does something a bit special so what's the special thing it does it gives the position of the uh, last item in an array. For example, now, if we are looking for, if an array ex exists multiple times, I think it's better if I do the example myself. For example, for vegetables, if I have, um, Kula not is not vegetable. Uh, what's a vegetable? So I should give me one more, please. Just one more. Garden egg. Spinach. Spinach. Adding egg. So, and let's say I have uh, carrots here again. And I have um, garden egg here too. Um, 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 um. So, let's say garden egg. Comma, this. So now, if I want to get the last index of, let me say, garden egg. hope I get the spelling correctly. If I want to get the last index of garden egg, it's going to check through the array. That's what it does. Let me just take this. 
I think it's control B if I'm not wrong. Good. So <clears throat> it's going to check the last index of garden egg. It checks through the array. That was the last index of those. It will go cabbage. Okay, what I have is garden egg. So it will go here. Garden egg. No, it's not garden egg. It's cabbage. Garden egg. Yes, it's garden egg. What's the number? One. Okay, to save that. Garden egg. No, this is onions. Garden egg. No, this is carrots. Garden egg. No, this is bitter leaf. Garden egg. No, this is oh yes this is garden egg so it's going to check again zero one two three four five this is five then it's going to look here garden egg no it's carrot so it's now going to take the last index of that particular element and return it so here it's going to give me 10 i'm coming one zero one two three four five why is it showing me 10 Oh, I looked through the food array, not the veggies array. Veggies. Now it's going to show me five. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. So this is the last index of garden egg that it could find. There were many garden eggs, but this was the last one that it could find. And that's what it returns. So that's our last index of, that's how it works. So yes, we have includes, yeah, which returns boolean, true or false. For example, if I use includes garden egg, it's going to return true for me, obviously, because... Uh, let me switch on the lights. Okay. Veggies.includes, what's the name? Garden egg. It's going to return true for me. But if I go to fruits put array dot includes and then i'll type adding egg add egg it's going to show me false because the fruit array does not include garden egg so it's also very 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 good it is extremely important why because you use it for conditionals a lot a lot a lot you use it a lot includes two so yes we have that this is the same thing that are going includes node you look for it node yes node is included it's just true c no c is not contained there so checking an array this is it array is array oh yes now i remember so if you want to check if an array is an array if the data type is an array and the reason why this array is array is necessary is because if I go to type of type of um, fruit array, for example, or food array, whatever, it returns objects. So using type of, I'll never actually really be able to know if food array is an array. Because when you go to type of an array, it is going to return objects for you. So if you want to check if an array is an array, you use array dot is array into bracket. You type the name of what you want to check if it's an array or not. And then it is, oh God. Yeah, it is going to return true for you. The food array is an array. What did I do? That, yeah, that is not an array. Mm -hmm. Now it's going to show me that word is not an array. Even though you can use some array methods for it, but this is it. This is a string, not an array. So that's what it's going to return for you. So this array is array is to check if a um, if a particular variable, if data stored in a particular variable is actually an array, is a real array. So that is what array is array is used for. I rarely use it though. I don't think I've ever used it before. But yes, remove. Converting an array to a string. Very simple method. The name of the method is to string. So let's say you want to manipulate a string. You use splits. And then after using splits, you change some things, added some things, did, or did some magic. And now you want to com com uh, you want to change what you have done now into a string. You can just use to string for it although to me i think there is a better method and that better method is this join 
So join is used to join array elements. This is it. Join, it is used to join uh, the elements of the array. The arguments we passed in the join method will be joined in the array and return as a string. By default, it joins with a comma. Why? Because in the array, you can see a comma there. This comma here, this is another comma here, this is another comma here. So when you use join, it just brings out, in short, what it does is that it just removes this bracket and brings whatever it is there for you and just prints it out for you. By default, it joins with a comma, but we can pass different string parameter which, which can be joined between the items. Now, why is this so good? This is so good because you can actually use it to uh, convert an array into a word that actually makes sense. Let's say you have been working with something and then you split it, you did this, you did that. Now in the array, you have words that make sense. Like you have like almost a sentence there. Sure, let me. Yes, you have like almost a sentence there. And <clears throat> let me give you an example. Military mm. sentence be equal to I am a good boy. Now, let's try to string at first. Array uh, sentence dot to string. What will it return? I comma am comma a comma good comma boy. This this does not make sense. If I use join to, without putting anything inside, it's going to do the same thing. I comma a comma good comma boy. But if I want to make it to a sentence, what does the sentence have between words? simple answer it has a space between words so in this join this is where you put something that you want to exist in between each of the elements if i put a space there now i get a nice meaningful sentence i am a good boy if i want to put uh let's say here i have uh I don't know. Let's say here I have skills, 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 but not tech skills. Let's say, um, oh, football skills or football positions. R M, uh, F W, R W, C B, R P. So now. If I want, if I use just join, this is what's going to happen. I'm just going to print everything out will come up, but this too does not make sense. So what I can do is, I, I can make it, I can make a comma to be inside. And then after that comma, I want to put a space after it. And then I'll have this, which makes more sense. So that's what join is used for. Not only to join them together, but you have the privilege of putting whatever you want to be in between those elements you have the privilege of putting them using join so which i think is an iphone though i think yeah yeah an iphone too is good if you need an iphone anything basically is an iphone or whatever you put inside is going to just use it and put it in between the elements whatever it is and space and space yeah like this so Whatever I put inside, it's, it's going to work out. So yeah, there you have that. Join. You'll be using it in your tasks too. That's why I spend time on it anyways. Slice. Oh, very nice. Slice is to cut out multiple items in range. It takes two parameters. The starting position and the ending position. Now there's something you should always remember. It does not include the ending position. It's like, okay... This is going to help those that are good in mathematics. This is what slice does. Mm, let's say I want to slice between the second and the third elements. This is what oh god, this is what it's going to do. Three. 
uh, let's say between the third and the eighth element this is what's going to bring out this is like how it is in mathematics this is how you write it as like in mathematics for those that have done uh sets or what was the name of the topic even this is how it's going to print it that is it's going to start from three and three is included and then it is going to end at eight but eight is not included what do i mean by this we'll see let's say uh, should i use the example or no i think my example is better let's say i think a race sentence no oh, don't let me use a race sentence doesn't make sense i hope wait i hope to what's going on around is not disturbing you guys can you guys hear any sound apart from my voice Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jesus, oh, there's nothing I can do about it. Yes, you can hear, but African. Yeah. There's a there's a mosque right beside me. There's a judge right beside me. So there's not much I can do. So 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 we move, we move, we move. Football positions. So yes football positions dot are we talking about splice or split i think it was splice before i jump up. i think yes we are talking about splice of course splice so two and let's say from the second no no not from the second from the first index I want to be removing things and I want to stop removing things. Let's say I want to remove the forward and the right winger. So that means I'm starting from zero from the first index because it's going to remove this. It removes the first parameter you put. And then if I say one, two, and then I want to stop at zero, one, two, three. If I say I want to stop here, it's not actually going to remove the third element. It is going to remove the second one. But the position where I put that I want to stop is not going to affect it. Uh, so this is the new one now. It has removed this forward and right wing. So now you have is the right midfielder. You have the right winger. It was a zero. I'm coming. Zero, one, two, three. Why the three? Forward. Nice between now. Oh, it shows what is. I think it takes out the TV. The thing is, what I even want to show is this ball positions. One, two, three. With what I talking about, split duly. Oh, I was not that made a mistake. I jumped. I jumped. I jumped. It's slice, not splice. Oh, and that was a question that I was reserving you know, for the difference between slice and splice. Ah, well, there you have it. So, <clears throat> don't focus. Yeah, I've been uh, hands in the air. So, we are many. So, what slice does is that slice is special in a way as okay because i know some of you guys can ask that oh why is slice and splice what's the difference between them what slice does is that it slices it but whatever slice does does not affect the array for example now it has sliced out the forward and the right um and the right winger but if i still want to check the array the original array the original array is still very well alive fully even though it was sliced, the original array is still present. So slice is mostly used when you want to cut out a part of the array and save it somewhere else. Because it is not used to modify the original array. It is used to cut out a part of the array. That's what it does. And when you cut it out, that's when you can now... 
um, I'm coming. I want to change this so that it will make more sense. Let it be L. So now let's say I want to cut out the wingers, and I'll be like, let's wingers equal to this. So now if I check wingers, you'll find out that it would have saved it. Okay, let me check it just from here. This is wingers. So now I have wingers and I still have all the players they were at the beginning before. However, if I use splice, splice will cut from where you tell it to cut and it's up to where you want it to cut. For example, now I said for slice. It's not going to cut the last element that I put here, but it's going to cut the one that I put before it, before this index. That is, slice is going to cut, it's going to go to this zero, this is one, it's going to cut this, it's going to cut two, but it's not going to cut this third one. But splice, splice is going to cut one, two, three. And splice will actually modify that array. That is, this original array now would have reduced. It has been modified now. You only have this and this left. These three, you have spliced them out. So splice does two things. It takes what it splices out, because that is you can actually save it somewhere else, but it also modifies your array. So if you want to do something, you want to cut out some, some elements from your original array, and you don't want them to exist in that array again, you use splice. But if you just want to get them out of it, but you still want the original array to exist, you use slice. So please don't confuse them with each other. Thank you. Now I could not. Then Larry. Ask you. Yeah, also. Hmm? So for the flies um, method, whatever it is. Ledger. Mm -hmm. I can hear you. There are some numbers in the brackets. One, comma three, like the roots. But oh. we didn't get the same values. I don't understand. What is the impact of? So I understand that for splice, that one is telling us that it will start with the element with index one, mm -hmm. and then it will put the next the next mm -hmm. number three, the next three elements starting from that one. So it will now give us three elements. What do you? Right? No, 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 no. Why it does it? This I one it starts yeah. from one, and it. Mm -hmm. Ends at three. For example, now if I if I say two and three, this is it. I'm coming. It starts from two, one, two, and then takes the three elements from two. I'm coming. Where is it? It starts from two and then takes three elements from two, takes them away. So it starts from this is zero, one, two. It starts from two. This is the starting index. This is the element it takes away. If I say two and uh, Let's say, let me even make it this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. This is 4. Let's say I can even say uh, football positions dot length over 2, comma, um, comma 1. That means at the middle of this, I want it to remove the middle element. Like, I want to remove the middle element. That is, it's going to divide this by 2. And remove the elements. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There are how many here? Okay. So, it's going so to take this slides, and remove. So, how does slice? How does what? Slice. What slice does slice. it? It starts removing from your first parameter. And before it gets to your last parameter, it stops. This is it. I'm coming. Okay, it's good. For example, if I use um, zero to two, this is what it does. It starts from element zero, and the element with the index of zero. It starts from it. It removes it. Takes the element with the index of one. Starts from it. Removes it. But this last one that is written here, it does not take it. So it starts from the first parameter and ends before it gets to the second parameter. Okay. That answers my question. Thank you. Okay, good. You're welcome. So, adding an item to an array using push. Push is used to add to an array, to push an item into an array, literally. <laughs> and when it pushes, it pushes to the uh, to the last index. This is what I mean by pushes to the last index. If I want to push 
let's say a football positioner push let's say I want to push very important member gk I will have football positions now the goalkeeper but when it pushes as you can see it pushes like after this like there's an ochre there's um there's a queue already so it just goes next at the back so that's what push does you can use it to push to push elements into an array very useful so yeah this is it that's what they did here basically and then to remove pop is used to remove the item in the end this is it uh, ah. okay yeah this is it football positions dot pause i just added the goalkeeper but now if i want to remove the last element i use pop and it pops it out so it's popped out to the goalkeeper so now if i check my football positions the goalkeeper is no more there because i popped it out and then we also have something called shifts shifts and watch oh it's even written here it removes the first element from an array and returns it if the array is empty undefined is returned because there is no first element there and the array is not modified this is it so now the last element is oh the first element is rm this is it this is the first element and if we check our football positions again and see here that it is no more there it has shifted the first element away boom it has shifted the first element away and now we have this there's also another one called on shift which literally does the opposite of shift for example push is going to add to the last like it's going to add to the last side why on shift is going to add one item from the beginning so if you want to add an item to the beginning or from the or should i say to the beginning or from the beginning use on shift if you want to add to the end you use push so that's how it is reversing array order instead of using a loop to reverse an array we have been given a method you can also use loop yourself though it's, it will still work but instead of doing that you they are you have been blessed with this dot reverse yeah we were talking about this one class like that for those that attend classes you will remember so yeah this is dot reverse it will automatically help you reverse your array from one to three four five to five four three two one sorting elements in an array uh, recently tochi was asking for a function that can help you to sort an array without using the sort method which i think who, who sent it was it not james i think it was james that sent it i can't remember so yeah so there is a simple way to do that just one line which is dot sort this is it once you do this it is going to help you well, what, what can i say it's going to help you sort your array in other words where is it um, but now that sort as a problem i'm coming what do i want to do let me use numbers to make it let's my numbers be equal to um let's say 467 Okay, let me first do this. One, six. So this is it. If I want to sort this, my numbers dot sort. I have this. So it sorts it. One, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Which is good, right? yes it's very good so it sorts it for you however if i have something like this and i use sorts i see what happens one 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 comes before two then three then four seven eight then five then six then eighty four then nine is this in ascending order no 
what it does is that it just checks the first one in front of it and oh okay yes and then it sees this as oh yes this is really the lowest oh this is next this is next this is next oh this one starts with four so it has to be lower than five and then it just prints it out like that so to use the sort method you actually have to pass a callback function inside it since we've not done functions i will not uh i'll not talk about that now because it's going to bring back it's going to bring more questions but when we are talking about functions callback functions and uh here -huh, then we'll be talking about it but that is the way to effectively use sort method you can put the callback function here and with that function too you can actually use it to reverse the array so this is like multi-purpose right here now using if put the callback function here you can use it in ascending order or in descending order depending on the function you put inside this place so oh yeah this is sort takes a callback function we'll see how to use the sort back function in the coming sections yes me too i'm not talking about it now so array of arrays array can store different data type including an array itself that is an array can store anything anything it will take it it does not discriminate for example if i say const um uh with array is equal to let's say one four and even i'm coming um well, i wanted to do something on okay an array three six and put a string inside two and put the boolean inside false I can yeah and then by the time my console dot log my great array it comes out with everything inside let me use console dot log so that I guys you see it this is it so everything there's an array inside right here so this is the first the zero index is one the next is four the array this is the array here yeah, three six f d f d the next is 13 the next is false the length one two three four five the length is five so it's not as if when you are now counting the length you will not be counting this array with it too that one two three four five mm -mm -mm -mm. this itself is an element this one here is one element on its own so guys understand that you can put anything inside even an object too you can put an object inside it takes any type of data type so with this now does anyone have questions okay i have enough time for questions and exercises let it be rolling let it be rolling no questions exercises are coming on no questions oh i have something in the comments we don't have questions okay go to the exercises so i'm going to choose exercise okay let's just do one at least to make me know if you guys have been following me and then i'll call the name at random too so that to not be just those that have been talking miss shade can you please tell me how to declare an empty array Miss Shade, can you please tell me how to declare an empty array? Um, you can just say let's okay. array. Let's array equals then equals. square bracket with nothing inside. Square bracket with nothing inside. What if I don't want to use this method? Hmm? 
What if I don't like square brackets? I don't know. I was not at the beginning of the class. The square brackets my ex used to use, so I have decided never to use square brackets again. In that kind of situation, what, what should I do? You do this. Ah, amazing. You do this. And then you have an empty array. Use the array object okay. then with brackets next to it. So yes, thank you. Now we'll go to the real questions. We we'll go to the real questions. Question number, let me see seven. Okay, no, that's question on top of it. Mm. <sighs> oh, I've done something like this. Question 19, slice out the middle IT company or companies from the array. IT company, okay. Let me just do this. So we have this. So this, the middle item, the middle IT company here, I want to slice it out, or I want to splice it out, or I want to split it out, whatever. Who can tell me how to do it? You nobody talks in five seconds. I will start picking people. So I want to take out the middle elements, this one here. How do I do it? Um, yes, I can do it. The array dot slice or splice, whatever you want to do. Mm -mm -mm, no, you, you really want to tell me what to do. You said splice or splice. You were no, not specific. I so. was just like, which one do you want to use? Okay, let's do splice. Splice. Uh huh. Uh huh. And the length of that array divided by two. The length of this array divided by two. How do I get the length? Uh, web text dot length all over two. Mm hmm. Comma. Okay. This can't see the question. <laughs> I think you I should just copy, copy it. it. Yeah. Slice out. So it was slice. So let's use slice. Ah uh, no! You have started with splice. We must finish with it. Because you were not specific. Ah, you want to use slice? Have at it. It says slice out the IT company. <laughs> okay. Please remove that cursor so I can see. I remember it there. Okay. I think that was. Uh... Where is the. Array web text. Yeah. We want to remove the middle one. You don't need to know. You don't need to know what is there. You don't need to know. You don't need to see the array. So can I try? Go ahead. You can help her. Okay, can I see the array again? No, you can't see the array. No, I mean the not this one, the question. The question is right there. Slice out the middle IT company or companies of the array. From the arrays. I, I need to see the arrays now. You don't need to. Why do you need to? Okay, I if I'm to use slice and the slice method. Mm -hmm. um, what is the name of the variable? Okay, can I create a, an array and slice out the middle? Which array do you want to create? There's already an IT company. The name of the IT company is Webtex. Now we want to. Oh my God! No, sir. 
Ah, good, perfect. No, no. <laughs> okay. So okay. string the array for you guys. Um, the name is uh, there. So you use array uh, my web text dot slice, then brackets. How many are there? There are six, bro. I don't know how many there are. It doesn't many? matter. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I understand where you are going to now. You want us to start that fresh. Okay. Okay, divided by two. Let's put it in. Let's say that six divided by two. Damn, Larry. Yes, yes. Are you expecting us to use mathematics here? Why do you need mathematics? You have a method. I'm asking now. Ah. No, if you can use mathematics, use mathematics too. I was expecting us to check the the array, the array um the element of the array then we'll do it down the, now. Why? Like then why, 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 why do you need why do you need the computer? I can't then? remember the number it's beside that divided by two. Maybe it's two or three. That's what I can't uh, You guys should think it out. If 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 the, if that was the answer, then why why do you need a computer? If that was the, the answer you wanted to give, there's no need for a computer. But well, let's say you do can't even see the array. They just told you, okay, write this to remove the. Who wants to try? Wants to help them? This is in level one. Remove the comma first. Remove the comma. He said I should remove the comma. You want to see the result? Okay. <laughs> yes. Mm. This is your result. <laughs> In fact, let me even let me even show you guys the array. This is it. This is the array. <laughs> Can you see? Can you see? Or oh, you've not seen it? We can see it. We can see it. We can see it. Mm. What do you see? So I let okay. Web tech dot slice bracket. What has it four, done? Comma. Hello, sir. I'm giving you what my, my solution. No, no, the person that gave this solution, let him see his answer first. I've seen it. You've seen it. Yes. And There's nothing you want to do. Hello. Ah, the person disappeared. Choke, choke. You no know, choke. You have to choke. You finish it. Finish what you started. Then I'll take the other person to finish it. This is. Let me show you slice example here. A place where we will use slice. Oh, I deleted it. Uh -huh. This is slice for example. You have to if you want to remove one element. You can specify the starting position and the ending position. What you did not specify was the position where it should end. And what's the position where it should end? Let's say you can't see it. If you can't see it, then the position. Last index of. No, you just want to remove one. You want to remove one. One. You just want to remove one element. Minus one. Minus one. No, you want to remove the middle element. It's the middle element you want to remove. Okay, okay, then Larry. So I'll say comma um web text dot length over two then plus one. Hmm. Okay, okay. That is good. That is good. No, this is not the full answer, but at least there was something. I wanted to get from this over to. I think I would rather save this in. Uh, uh, let's see what it will do. So now, if we check web text, uh, web text this WebTech is still going to retain all the characters, although what you have done here is you sliced out the middle character. And now, they intentionally use this slice out from, for you because although they did not specify whether I should modify the array or not, so you could say, okay, maybe this was the answer. Because what it does is it slices out React. 
But now, one thing you should know is the element that we are talking about, it might be an even number or an odd number. So I want you guys, what I really wanted from you guys was for you guys to write a code for me that would work for both even numbers and odd numbers with what you learned from last class combined with what you have learned this class. That is, let me give you another hint. You have to use conditionals with this that you have here with slice or splice for now take anyone or those i think splice should be the answer because it's going to modify the original array but they did not say whether i should modify or not so slice or splice you are welcome but i want the one that will work for both even number and odd number because if react goes out here now you can see that one two three one two three it takes out the middle value but what if there was something else here like let's say maybe c if C was present here, if C was present here, then it's going to take Redux out. And then is Redux really the one at the middle? No, it isn't. Okay, so you want us to produce a condition now? Yes, a condition that, that okay. Let me give you another hint. If it is uh, an odd number, it should remove one, that is, one at the middle. If it is an even number, it should remove two this and this that this and this i want you guys to at least tell me okay um let's go if you guys I'm should help boys everyone know. Uh -huh. open the bracket let's put the condition um array dot length you said array dot length okay you should do so I'm saying, let's say whatever the array is. What just Web happened? Oh, I just called. Use... I called Alisa. <laughs> ah. Or you capital letter for the array, capital letter A. So whatever Please, array. Please don't is. say Alisa again, Abeg. It's uh, your array. I, I, I didn't get that. Uh, your array is sounding like Alisa, and it's alerting my Z whatever or AI or whatever you call it. <laughs> okay, yeah. You want to that one again. Okay, web tech. Web tech. Only like Alisa. So, ah, nice edit. Okay, web tech. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Dot length. Length. Equals. Equals. Like, I want to use this strict equality so let's say three equals to sign um two n two n yeah two n okay so um. i'm going to come up and define n later ah uh, okay okay interesting um return return sorry uh I use return? I don't mind my <laughs> my also dot log no this is my function um Okay. Uh, put an empty. Okay. Let me even make it very easy. Um. Wait. Before, continue, before, gee, before you continue. Before you continue. Before you continue. Before you continue. Define your n. Okay. So please remove that two from the end. I remove the two. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'd save myself so much. So, um, go up for the if statement. Mm -hmm. N. Mm -hmm. Just like that. Uh, let N, whatever. Let N. Because. Because. 
Let me even do something, Steph. What is... Use tricks, yeah. Okay, let's end. Um, I'm trying to see how to... The best way to define odd numbers, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, pause. Who wants to help her out or who wants to say something about her solution? I think we can use modulo. Modulus, okay. Yes. How, how should we use it? So I think it should be if web tech, then the percentage okay. zero. The percentage. Mm hmm. Uh -huh. Yeah, zero. Zero. Why zero? I'm not saying rubbish. No, no. Why zero? And so that means, I don't know, but if it's this modulus, that is zero, what that does means, it do? It's used to check. Oh, you said if the remainder um, is zero. Remainder of what? <laughs> so if, if the number. <laughs> if the number will give us a remainder of zero, that makes it an even number. Remainder of zero from what? From the length of the array. So, um, Busari, I think I, I get you. No, no, chill, okay. chill, so chill, that... chill, 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 wait, wait, wait. She has to say it herself. So now you said if the <laughs> remainder we give you zero, that means it's an even number. Good. But how will yes. you get a remainder of zero? How can you get a remainder of zero from any even number? What's the arc for that? Okay, modulus two. Yes, modulus two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then you can in in place of that console dot log. Then we can... no, you are not done with your condition. Oh, because if you do this now and it gives zero, aha, 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 good. If this gives zero, is it a falsy value or a truthy value? It's a truth value. Yes, it's a truthy value, but if it gives any figure apart from zero it's a falsy value oh pff. yes if it gives zero is a falsy value but if it gives if, if it gives any figure apart from zero apart is from a truthy value zero. so you can actually do this yeah. without necessarily saying this or whatever you can just use this that's one of the advantages of truthy value so now but this will mean that if this is false okay just continue so if it's divided by two, what do you want to do? So we can now put that that other solution we had. We now go in this place of console dot log. Uh, which one? Remind me, I forgot. The one where we said um, web tech web tech divided by two. Are you sure? For example, if you have an even number, a discrete or non discrete whatever, a data with an even number, how do you find the one that is at the middle? We're automatically going to have two values at the middle. Uh -huh. How will you get those two values? Uh, I don't know. No, no. Who wants to help out? She has tried. You add one to the length of the strange, and then you specify that it should take. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Something, something is going on here. Okay. Are there no men in this chat? You can see men now. It's women that have been talking. Wait, you girls, chill. This is. There has to be gender equality here. So the, the the men have to speak. Please, I, I need a man. Ah. Hello. No more I do like this now. Why are you doing like this? <laughs> ah, you you men do not want to speak. Why? What's going on? You guys should speak. Ah. You girls have tried. Well. I'm waiting now. Or else I'll go back home. Ah, because me, I'm I'm not even really a fan of gender equality before. So I'll just go back to the women. So
So you guys should come up with a solution now. You guys have 15 seconds to start speaking. Now. 15, 14, 10, 9, 5, 4, 3, 2, Oh my god, not a single man. Ah, ladies, let's go. <coughs> your men has your men have they've said no. Ladies, let's move on. Now. Ah ladies too. Damn that let's continue now. Ah, let's continue. Okay. The men they have they are forsaking me. It's like I'm switching gender to now. Not by men, if they don't understand well yet, oh, wow. they shouldn't. I'm switching my gender no, tomorrow. Let me ask me. Let's go. Best of luck with that. Mm -hmm. Console dot log what? Um, one sec. Okay. Um. So I was saying, Busari, you were saying if we have a if if this does not have a remainder. Are you there? Yes, I'm there. No, I'm not saying it to Busari. you. I don't want saying it. I get. Sorry, are you there? Okay. Um, so, what this um, condition means is that um, if web text dot length, if the length, the value you get has no remainder, she has not divided it by two yet. This is now. So that's the web divided by length. two. This is now. Oh, which one are you talking about? The web text of length, did you divide it by two? I don't understand. What okay, yeah. just just see your code, don't worry. Sorry for disturbing you. I'm sorry. Just continue. Okay. <laughs> so the point is you divide this by two. Just tell me the you code to write. Right? Now. Hmm? right? Damn Larry, if I'm wrong, please I sound to be corrected. Percentage means remainder. No, we are writing a condition whether it gives a remainder or yeah, that's not. What I'm saying, that this percentage here stands for remainder. This what? It means remainder, right? No, this is okay. if this is divide if this if you divide it by two. It depends on I the value that it gives. Like that this this modulus stands for if this. Okay, this is it. In other words, this is what this line is talking about. Uh, well, if you want to write it, I'll end up writing <laughs> Ario Pritos. Uh, with this. That's what this line is talking about. That's not my question. So what's your question? Web text dot length gives us the length of the entire array. Yes. Thank you. Where did you divide it by two in this condition? That's my question. This okay, me I was I thought we were talking about this modulus sign because this one is talking about the remainder after dividing the length by two. But that's why I'm not going to I include it here. Just just continue. Just continue. No, so I've not seen where you have divided the length by two. That's the point I'm making. Okay, okay. Just continue. Just continue. I'm waiting on. Okay. Let me write. I continue. Yes, now I've been waiting for you. I can't continue. But no, if it's not making sense to me, I will just... Just continue. Okay. Don't worry. Continue, I'm waiting now. I'm just writing the logic for you guys so that other people too can come in. Okay. Mm. At least you. Did 
the logic is actually pretty easy. Yes, that's what I'm going to say. But my point is, I think it should be web text with length divided by two. If you have a remainder of zero, that that's what my condition is going to be. If I'm, if I'm that is so what I'm trying to tell you. That this, we have something called from... Hey, what was going on? Okay, from our last class or from two classes ago, we learned that we have something called truthy and falsy values. And we got to know that truthy values are, especially when talking about numbers, truthy values are, truthy values are any number apart from zero, positive or negative. As far as it is not zero, it is a truthy number. If it is zero, it is a falsy number. So now, if this is divisible by two, this now is going to give me false. If it is divisible by two, why? For example, now what we have here is what? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Please don't rush. Okay. Slow down. You said if, if this is divisible by two, if this is where divisible have you written it? This, this is divisible by two. This is a modulus the, here the, that shows. The modulus sign. The is modulus. showing that it is divisible that that that's divided by two and yes. it's going to give us the remainder yes thank you so this now we are dividing by two so what's inside this bracket is going to depend on the results that is here for example now if it is actually divisible by two this will give us zero and when this gives us gives us zero this will become a what a falsy value it will become false. That means this condition will become false. And it is not going to do what's written inside this bracket. That is if it's it divisible is not by it. it. Yes, it is not going to do it because this condition is false. Anything that is in this condition is only fulfilled for IFO. is only fulfilled if the condition is true. That is, if what's there is actually true. That is when it solves it. But when this gives zero, zero is a falsy value. That's the importance of knowing truthy and falsy values. Zero is a falsy value. So this condition. So I understand truthy and falsy value. What I am really confused about is the fact that you are saying web text the length percentage. How about you say that right now? Percentage. Wait, chill, chill. Right? Mr. OG, please mute your mic. I can't even mute you from here. Thank you. I wanted to ask you a question. Okay, ask, ask. Yeah, I... <sighs> this is your yeah, mic, yeah. Eh? From the question you said, if the lens is even or we should return the middle numbers. And we know that if they are even, two middle numbers are going to come. Two middle I Wait, I can't hear you very well. I can't hear you very well. Like there's interference or something. Can you hear me now? <sighs> Please, there's still interference. I can hear something like vroom. Okay, better. Can I can hear you, hear you, sir. Yes, I can hear you now. Uh -huh. Okay, from the question, you said we should return the middle, um, middle value. Um, if the length is even or odd. So I was working with if it's even. That was where I was having issue. If it's even, then we need to return two values. You need to cut, slice two values. Yeah, we need to slice two values out. Was that your question? Because I was, I'm seeing where you are saying if there's zero, then they should do nothing. This is it. Let me Let me just type it here. Uh, let me just type on top of it. If this 
if webpex dot length divided by two. Okay, let me just type it. If uh, Uh, then web x dot length, yeah, where is it? This two. Uh, to give zero. So now we are working based on this. If okay. a, if this is divisible by two, you know this is going to give zero, right? For example, yes. let's say six is two. I see. It's going to give zero. Let me save it. It's yeah. going to give zero. If uh, if I use seven now, uh, a two. Yes. It's going to give two. That is, uh, two divided by seven. What's that? Two divided by seven. So that amplitude is meaning that divided by. Wait, why is it showing me two? Ah, it's not meant to show me two. Okay. Ah, I was wondering. That's Timmy. You mean that too? Yeah, hey, thank you, John. Mean, oh, oh, this. So yes, now yes, this is yes, going to show yes. one. Three oh, you, I was wondering. Use and, use and. Eh? This? So this is what we are talking about for now, for now. This is what we are talking about. So this is going to show one. That is, it's going to show a positive number or negative whatever it's going to show a positive number and then all numbers apart from zero are truthy numbers so what it means is that if this is actually divisible by two the result will be zero and if the result is zero zero is a falsy value so if the result is zero what is in this condition will become false and then the if what if checks is if the condition it checks for whether the condition is false or true for example if i do something like this if uh three is greater than two should uh, do this oh, i get your question yes this so i'm telling you to do this if three is greater than two so what it's going to do is that it is going to check if three is actually greater than two, which is true. So if what is in this condition is true, it's going to do what you have written inside. Now, let's say we have else here. If this condition is not true, for example, now if I say three less than two, it's going to check and see that, oh, three less than true is not true. That is, three less than two is false. So it's not going to do what is here. It is now going to do what is written in your else instead. So damn Larry, I understand you. My point is Good. what I don't understand is the fact that web text length books on tag two. Sorry, I'm missing section. Percentage two. Yes. Is you are dividing web text length by two and having no remainder. No remainder is no, remainder is zero. I don't know whether I will have a remainder or not. I am writing a condition. Wait. And so that condition is saying that this is even if the, if it is even right. No, what this condition is saying that it should hey, someone's mic, someone's mic. Oh. Whose mic is that? Let's assume that we're, we're I'm, I'm for now. six. 
if we have take of length is six and we have to divide by two, our remainder is going to be zero. But if we have text dot length is seven, then our if we are going to divide by two, it's going to give us remainder of one. Yes. So what we are doing is that this is like check the remainder of web text dot length divided by two. If the remainder is zero, zero is a false value. So this what is here is now like if this is false, and when it is false, what is going to happen is that it will not do what is written in the if statement. That is what truthy and falsy values were. This was this was what we did in our second class. I will explain. I understand that more. Yeah. Let me let so me I tell you. The question initially. I thought you are returning two values if they are even. Yes. So I was working on the picking the two values. Yes, but we're so we're, that line, yes. Let me tell you what will be in the console.log for both cases. Then let me now ask my question. You will now understand what I'm asking. Okay, okay. Tell so, me what's inside the console.log. So inside the console.log, you have web text dot slides. Open the bracket. Web text at length. Uh -huh. Divided by two, comma. Mm. Comma. Comma. Yeah. Uh -huh. So take the same, just copy that web text at length divided by two again, then plus two. you are not okay plus two right yeah. you don't there's something you don't understand now this condition here is it for when it is divisible by two or for when it is not divisible by two But when it is divisible by two, now that was what I was trying to explain to you. That I said you understand. What okay, this what this condition is talking about is that it should check for the remainder of web text dot length divided by two. If web text dot length divided by two has a remainder. That means the number is an odd number, if it has a remainder. And once the number has a, is an odd number, an odd number, zero is not an odd number. So if it is, uh, it can be an odd number, it can be an even, even number, whatever the number is, as far as it has a remainder, this is going to give true. And once it gives true, it will do what is here. But Oh, if, oh, 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 but oh, if oh, the condition oh, oh, oh. gives false, that is, if okay, this actually sorry, gives zero, now. chill, chill, chill. If this actually yeah. gives zero, this condition, what is here, will become false because zero is a false value. And then it is not going to do what is written in the if statement. Okay, okay. So please just take out that last two that I specified there. The plus two, change to plus one. No, no, no. Not I should, the I should change to. The plus two change to plus one. Plus one. Yes, that's the understanding that I chill, have. Chill, chill. Nice, nice. So far, so good. The best for this will actually be splice, but okay, yeah, let's go. Then, is this all? This is not all. What if it's an odd number? Okay. Or what Else. if it's an even number? Else. Open the curly braces. Else. Copy that condition. I don't need, why do you want me to copy the condition? No, 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 sorry, not the condition. The console.log is rather. This is in there. Mm -hmm. Kindly edit plus one to now be plus two. Mm. 
Ну да, Саня, ты. Эй! I'll come with you. Let me see. Ah, okay. He's not going to print this out. You guys, you guys. <laughs> hmm, how can I say this? How can I say this? What is... Uh, what's 6 divided by 2? 3. 6 divided by 2 is 3, right? Now, let's yes. check. Uh, that's 1. I'm coming. I have not learned where by two. That's three. Zero, one, two. I'm coming. Wait. Zero, one, two, three. Uh, did you not add plus one? What was going on here? Oh, plus one was added here. Yeah, what was added? This web text dot length dot two two three four five six seven eight. Oh, this is actually eight. 8 divided by 2, that's 4. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. It takes redox. Now, what you said here was plus 2, which means 1, 2. Because it's a slice, it's going to stop before this. It's going to take redox and node. Now, let me ask you something. Are these the elements in, at the middle of the array? It's meant to be redox and oh, react. Oh, oh, no, I get you. No, I get you. I understand the deal. Um, okay. Um, Dan Larry. I can hear you. Hello? I can hear you. Is, take out the plus two at the end of the last um, console.log. Okay. Then go to the first um, web text that length over two. Subtract mm -hmm. one minus one. Okay. <laughs> you know that because if I'm to write the position, I will not write it the way you have written it. That is my problem. No, you were the one that wrote it too. No, I was not the one that suggested modulus. It was Busari. That's what I was calling uh, on her. Okay, carrot and shots. You now tell me this this should be the answer. And then for this one, is this one correct? Sure, let me check before we write your one. Web take the space in your two. Over two. Okay, let's see what now it is. Okay, good. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so how will your own be? This is the answer though. How will your own be? You can also use uh, what you call this tenary operators for this though. But how will your own be? Yeah, yeah. Tell us how you want your own to be. So I'll say that um web text with length divided by two. I'm just thinking in my head. That's not the but just write it down, please. Divide by two. If you do this division and you have a remainder, if you don't have a remainder, obviously it's even. No, we have a no, we don't know whether it's even or not. So just so I'm just saying web text web text dot length could be any number. If mm -hmm. you divide any number by two and you don't have a remainder, uh, tell me the code. Means that number. Hold on. I'm I'm bringing out the thought process first. So after that, if I now have a remainder, it means the number is hard. So um you to state that something has a remainder is um, I'm waiting for your code. What takes a plane to write it? I think I'm going to, I'm trying to compare the, uh, compare it to maybe the cost to, cheapest cost to sell or cheapest cost to, um, Something like that. So, Philip, what I'm trying to do is, can you kindly remind me what is that symbol that we used to say that this is the remainder when you divide? Modulus. Modul. Thank you. Modulus. Yes, modulus. Yeah, it's the percentage sign now. Huh? Uh, write it, because I'm now confused. Then zero. 
zero. Ah. Just like zero. I, I'm, that's not. I'm just placing things down. Calm down. Yeah. Okay. Think, right? I think you can. You can just put. Um, Between. Um, I, I think. I think you can put. Two is two equals to. Two equals to set of modulus. What did you say? So, instead of modulus. You guys should know that. I hope you guys know that. This, this is the question. In, this is the question in exercise one. This is the question in exercise one. There's exercise two. There's level three. Exercise yeah. three. It doesn't matter. Ah, okay. As long as you are able to understand this one better. The thing is, we'll get there, you guys should think about different. the logic. I know what you want to do. Let me do it now because of time. This is what this is what you are probably planning to do. If uh let me see web hey, web dot length divided by two. Uh huh. <laughs> so if it is not equal to zero, yes, yes. Uh, then it should do. Oh, well, come, let me make this more complicated. <laughs> That's not even what I wanted to write yourself, but uh, this should stay for. This is the way it would work. Either this way, or you don't put this in front. But anyways. Just, you added an exclamation mark in front of web. I know. Yeah. Uh, eh? Wait. Yes. If I remove the exclamation mark, this is what will happen. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> if this web text dot line divided by two is not, if it is not equal to zero, which with this is this going to be true or not? Let's see. This is false. So if it is not equal to zero, that means it's going to do this. And then we'll be getting I'm coming, I'm coming. Redox. But if I negate this, I'm coming. Let me see what happen. If I negate this, <laughs> it's going to give me this. And this is actually the this is the way of writing it. <laughs> Ah, so this is a way of negating the statement that I've put here. So if this statement actually, in a normal way, was meant to produce false, this is going to change it to true. <laughs> but the simple way, this is just a way of making things harder. Anyways, the simple way of writing this is this. And then I'll take this and put it here. And then I'll take this. Put it here. But if you are like someone like me, not with CDHD or whatever, no autism, but you just like when the false statement does for when it is true, that's when you cannot be putting this to negation sign. So that this one will be like this statement will be true actually. It's not going to be give you false. But but this is a simple way of writing it. So what this statement is basically saying is that if web text dot length divided by two is not equal to zero that is if it has a remainder if it is an odd number that's what you are literally saying here that if it is a, if it has if it is an odd number it should do this it should do what is inside the if but if it is an if it is an even number it should do this but this is the simplest way actually this one here it has the minimum writing. You don't need to do this. It just uses truth and false values, which I will implore you guys to actually go and learn how to use very well. Because, I mean, you, you use them. It's nice. I think I haven't used it recently. Where? Hmm? I, used it, I used something like that recently. Yeah. Instead of writing long statements, I just had to... Yeah. This. This here now is going to give me a truthy or a falsy value. For this particular one, is if it's true, it should do this. So you will use it anyways. You will use it no matter what. So we return to this.
do you guys understand if you don't understand don't be shy to say no truthing and false values at first can be a bit confusing but you just have to learn it uh, i don't understand the second code but you understand the first one no i mean the last line the else the else yes yes the else is the opposite of this that is, if this one is false, if the statement here, if the statement here, if it finds this statement to be untrue, for example, 2 is equal to 2, a true statement. As an example of a true statement. Now, if I say 2 is not equal to 2, as a false statement. Why? Because 2 is actually equal to 2. So, what's the conditional check? What it is going to what is going to work for what is whatever is written in the if is if the condition is true. So where the, if the condition is true, it does what is written inside if. If the condition is untrue, it does what is written inside else. If you don't have else, if the condition is true, it will do what's written inside if. If it is untrue, yeah, yeah. it will not do anything at all. So now this condition, what do, what does it say? It says that if webtech.length divided by 2 does not have a remainder of 0. If it does not have a remainder of 0. And in what case is it going to have, is, is it not going to have a remainder of 0? If it is an odd number. If it is an, if it is an odd number, the remainder will never be equal to 0 when you divide it by 2. That is, so if the remainder is not equal to 0, it should do this. But if the remainder is equal to zero, it should do this. That's basically what it's talking about. So now, for us, when it checked, it saw that, oh, web length dot two, uh, web, length, web text dot length divided by two actually has a remainder of zero because our web text dot length is eight, which is an even number. It has a remainder of zero, which means it is false. It does not comply with this statement. So it will go and do what is in the else statement. That's how conditionals work. If it finds out that the condition here is false, it goes to the else statement. But if it is true, for example, now if I put 7, if it's an odd number, if I remove Redux, if I remove Redux now, you'll find out that it's this that is going to solve. That is, it is an odd number. The remainder is not equal to 0. Because the remainder is actually going to be 1. And 1 is not equal to 0. 1 is not equal to 0, true or false. True. So it's going to do the if statement. Do you guys understand? Yes, I do. Good. Hey, time has gone. We are going to do just... Okay, let me end the class for people that will download it. <sighs> How about the, our exercise? Yeah, we're in the class and then we'll do one more exercise. So that at least people that came that came to class will have a plus. So yeah, you heard that if you don't come to class, you have missed an exercise. Yeah, I'm sorry.